One of the great things about having the Airsoft Arena is it gives me a chance to get out and experiment firsthand with a lot of the products that are available for playing the sport of Airsoft. But beyond that, it also gives me a chance to meet with a lot of the guys that play the sport regularly and see what works for them and get a little more of an informed opinion as to what works and what doesn't work when you're playing the sport. So I thought this week would be a good time to talk to you guys and answer some of your questions about combat loadouts for Airsoft. One of the things I was amazed at when I first got into this sport was the amount of time and effort that a lot of people put into selecting and outfitting themselves with just the basic outfit that they play this sport in. In fact, it's kind of like a khaki fashion show around here some days. Now, mind you, you don't have to look like you're in the military to fit in with playing airsoft. There's a lot of guys that show up in just a hoodie and a pair of jeans and they do just fine. On the other hand, there's the guys that are on the other extreme that show up in some kind of post-apocalyptic thing with all kinds of weird padding and it basically looks like something out of Mad Max and they do pretty well too. But most of the folks that come in here dress in some form of military style BDU. Now there's a lot of stuff that's on the market today just in the way of government issue BDUs. You've got the Army ACU pattern, you've got the Marine Corps MAR patch which is available either in the woodland or in the desert camo pattern. You can get into some of the vintage stuff like the Vietnam Tiger Stripe or the woodland camos that were from that era. And then you have the non-standard or contractor grade, um, they call these multi-cams that are available out there. For me, I just go for the old-fashioned Army ACUs. Number one, these are cheap. You can go to any Goodwill Salvation Army and pick these up for 10 or 20 bucks a piece and get a whole rig. You can get a couple of rigs for the, what you're going to pay for just one of the shirts in the uh, multicam pattern. The second thing I like is it's got a lot of Velcro, so if you want to customize it, you can get the Velcro patches and just stick them on there and you don't have to worry about getting somebody to sew it up in order to customize your outfit. The third thing I really like about these is that the color scheme works very well for this environment here in the indoor arena. I, from personal experience, I've seen guys that are wearing the other colors like the multicams and just in the lighting and just the general color scheme that's in here, ACU just seems to blend in a little bit better. So if you want to get a little bit of an advantage from having camouflage, this works best in this environment for me. Now mind you, if you live out in Arizona, the desert scheme is probably going to work better for you. If you live up in the northeast, you know, up in Maine where you got a lot of woodland area, the woodland camo is going to work best. But for here, I find, why in the world would you want to spend two to three hundred dollars on some kind of outfit like this when you've got something that's readily available and it works just fine in the indoor arena? One of the first things that I added to my outfit that I found to be terribly useful are knee pads. Let's face it, we're playing a game where the basic premise of the game is to try to not get shot. So you're going to spend a lot of time down low working in concealment, either crouching or crawling. So you're going to wear the knees on your pants out pretty quickly. So having good knee pads makes a lot of sense. I use the Fedragon brand. You can pick these up for between $15 to $20. There's also some of the BDUs that have the pants uh, with the pads sewed into them. I'm a little on the fence on those because they can be a little bit pricey and you can put a little more money in, you can put a little more money in, you can put a little more money into your rig and that makes more sense to me. Now you can buy these military grade ones, you know, good old fashioned skate pads work just as well too, just so long as you're giving yourself a little bit of extra protection, you know, is a big help when you're playing airsoft. Now the next thing that I've added to my rig is my tactic. I'd like to say, now I'd like to say that I put a lot of time and effort into designing this particular rig, but I really haven't. It's just like a lot of the stuff that I use for playing airsoft is stuff that's just come into my possession and I've just decided to make it work. This is a Falcon tactical vest that we ordered that just sat on the rack for you know months and months and months and nobody wanted it, so I ended up using it because I was getting tired of looking at it. I did personalize it with some black pouches on it. This is a Molly design that's got the loops so you can just position your pouches wherever you want. I opted for the black just for a little bit of contrast with it, so it's my own personal fashion statement with that. But because it's a Molly rig, you can sort of load it out however you want and position your pouches where you want them. Now, if you're using an AEG with a high capacity magazine, you probably don't need to carry extra magazines. I'm using a gas blowback rifle, so I only have a 30 round capacity, so it's necessary for me to carry extra magazines with me. But I find, you know, once again, a lot of guys that play airsoft, they really don't need extra magazines. And once again, it is a fashion statement. So, you know, you decide between whether you 
you need it for you you know utilitarian reasons or if it's something that you just like the way it looks you know whatever it's all good the next thing I've added to my rig is the drop leg holster which sits on this side this particular one is made by UTG and I carry a high capacity 1911 pistol it's a gas blowback this is my favorite I, I think and this is one of the things out of my loadout that I've actually put some thought into is I really like the high capacity 1911s that are out there because there's a lot of stuff for customizing these things this one once again is a bit of a Frankenstein it's a Caspian upper with a KJW lower so this was actually a couple of different guns that I just sort of bastardized and created one pistol and then I just added a laser sight onto the bottom of it which works really great for getting target acquisition very quickly especially in low light environments now one thing I should point out also on this particular rig is that the pistol belt is strapped onto the bottom of the vest so the vest is actually carrying the weight of the pistol belt so your pistol belt doesn't drop down once again I said I do have the drop leg holster on the side here and I'm still sort of on the fence as to whether or not this is the best way to carry a pistol um, to me when it comes to straight speed I like to have it up high on my hip because you can make draws much quicker and cleanly from up here but down here it's a little more out of the way um, you kind of have to reach a little bit further to grab the gun so it's a little bit of a slower draw but then again it's out of the way so it doesn't rub on things as much and I think the biggest concern with most people selecting rigs like this is it just looks cool as hell to have your gun low slung down here so you know you decide if you want to be able to get to your gun quickly have it up here on your belt if you like it to look cool just have it down on a drop leg holster now on the other side of my pistol belt I've got what's called a dump pouch here this is incredibly useful especially if you're using either mid cap magazines or if you're using a gas blowback with a fairly limited ammo supply you're going to be making a lot of mag changes now in the real world in combat you're not going to be too concerned about what happens to your magazine after you let it go you're basically just going to chuck it and go for your next magazine but in the airsoft world where you're spending thirty to fifty dollars on a replacement magazine you don't want to be just throwing them on the floor so this gives you a place where you you can put the magazine before you draw your next magazine and go back to work. Now I've got my drop leg holster on the one side, on the other side I've got another drop leg rig that I've got set up with a pouch that holds my shotgun shells for my tri-burst shotgun. Now I don't use my shotgun very often so this is more of just a fashion statement where I've got a drop leg rig on this leg, I just wanted something to make it look balanced on the other side just call it a little bit of fashion sense or whatever but this does come in useful for making shotgun shell changes because it's out of the way and I can still get to the shells quickly to make magazine changes for my shotgun another thing that I've added to my rig that I find just as indispensable as you know any other part that's on this rig are these padded leather gloves we get these from our distributor they're Chinese made I'm not sure exactly what factory they come from they're basically a no-name Chinese padded leather gloves and we sell them for under twenty dollars now I gotta say I ride a motorcycle and the gloves that I bought for riding my bike I spent about eighty bucks on and they are no better than these particular gloves here that we sell for under twenty dollars in fact I wish I knew about these before I spent all that money on my motorcycle gloves because I would have just assumed wore these they've got extra padding on the knuckles so they absorb a lot of the impact I've seen guys come in with bloody fingers from playing without gloves so I say this is a very good investment some guys complain that having the glove trigger finger is going to take away from their trigger control if that's so just go ahead and cut the trigger finger off and go with it that way you know and I think if I was in combat and my life depended on it I would probably cut the trigger finger off in order to get a little bit better control but this being a game and you know walking away with as few scars as possible is probably a little more important to me than trigger control here I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the finger on this one now one area that a lot of outfits leave exposed is your neck and I gotta say it's one of the worst places to get shot because it hurts like hell the skin on your neck is very thin it's very easy to bruise or even break the skin so I recommend covering that up as much as possible I'm using what's called a shemag which is just basically a scarf you don't necessarily have to wear something like this you can just wear a bandana or uh, steal one of your mom's babushkas for that matter but this gives you great cover a great way to cover up your skin they're available in a number of different colors you can get them in you know military kind of colors you can get them in more colorful reds and blues and stuff like that but it just makes great sense to cover up this part of your body now probably the most important part of your loadout which we're going to gloss over today because I don't want to beat it to death and God knows we're probably going to spend a million episodes talking about this in the future and that's your choice of your main weapon 
Lately, I've been leaning towards the gas blowback guns because they're a little more realistic. All of the functions on them operate, and it just generally gives you some positive reinforcement of everything that you learned about shooting an actual firearm. This particular one is a G&G &G gas blowback, although this is far from a standard factory issue. This is actually a Frankenstein gun made from a bunch of spare parts we had laying around the floor at the shop. The bottom part is a version one gas blowback. The top actually came off an electric blowback. So the handguard that's on this, normally you don't see on the G&G &G gas blowbacks, although it looks kind of good. So you guys at G&G &G might want to look at this and start issuing these as your standard issue. You'll also notice that I've got the Magwell grip, which I love to put on all of my guns because it gives you a great place to grab the gun. And it also opens up the Magwell for changing your mags, makes that go a little bit quicker. And we did add the barrel extension on the end because the actual inner barrel was a little longer than the outer barrel. So we just stuck that on there to extend it out a little bit further. So this is the gun that I'm using lately. Um, I'm probably subject to change in the future. The one thing you're probably gonna notice the most about this particular gun is the sights on it. Um, we do have a carry handle here with a cantilever high-rise sight which is great for airsoft because when you're wearing a full face mask it's hard to get your face in there in order to see the sight. So this gets it up nice and high so you got high visibility and you can get your face in there without having to change your position in order to see your target. One other thing I'd like to point out with my main weapon is the sling system that I'm using. This is a single point harness that just hooks onto the back of the receiver. One of the things I like about M4s is a lot of them come with this right at the back of the buffer tube. So it's very easy to hang these from a single point sling. Single points to me are great because when you drop the gun, it stays right where you need it so you can bring it right back into the action very quickly. You can also just grab your secondary and still have your primary in a spot where you can easily bring it back into the action. To cap it all off, I choose to wear the full face, full helmet style paintball mask. I know a lot of you guys out there like to wear the military style fast helmets with the goggles and then the face mask underneath that. But to me that takes a lot of time to rig that up. I like this because I can just pull it right on and I'm ready to go. When I'm done, I can just pull it right off. I don't have to spend 10 minutes getting my rig all put together. The other thing with the separate components on there is there are some small gaps in between and I have used them in the past. I got shot through one of the little teeny gaps and you figure how are they going to get a bullet in there? Well, it happens and I got shot in the face and you got to go around with a big zit looking thing on your face all day. Um, you know, in the real world, if you get shot in your face in combat, you're dead. So you really don't have to worry about it. But in airsoft, we get shot in the face a lot. So I prefer to walk away with as few scars as possible because God knows I'm ugly enough. I really don't need any help with making this face look any uglier. So I want to cover up as much as possible. So that's what I've been using these days for my own airsoft rig. And I say these days because it's subject to change because God knows something else might come in next week or next month and supersede everything else that I've done up to this point and totally change my mind. But for now, this is what's working for me. I'm not 100% sold on every aspect of this. So just use this as a sort of a reference for what you want to do for your own rig. I just hate to see a lot of guys that are out there that are totally worried about how an outfit looks more than how it actually works because I don't mind looking good, but let's face it, we're here with mostly dudes here. So I'm not all that concerned about how I'm gonna look around a bunch of sweaty guys. So if more girls start coming down here and playing airsoft, then I might take a little more of an interest in the fashion side of this. But I'm more concerned in whether I can draw my magazines out of it pivotally and is my pistol on, grab it and so on. That's what matters to me. Now the best part about the Replay Airsoft Arena is that you can try all this stuff out for yourself. You can go out and buy all this stuff and then find out later that you didn't really like it. We've got all of the uh, camouflage BDUs here. You can come down and try this stuff. We've got the guns. So you can see what works for you and then you can decide and then buy the equipment. So come on down, try the place out. Go to our website at replayairsoft.com for more information and hopefully we'll see you down here one of these days. So until the next time, don't let the bastards get you down.